everyone to another inventright.com TV show. Check out inventright.com, click on coaching, find out how Stephen, myself, and our coaches have been coaching and mentoring veterans for the last 16 years. So, we have a guest, but we really can't call him a guest anymore. He's a scary guest. Why are you, why are you scary, <laughs> Damon? You got anything? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Happy Halloween, everyone. Well, you know what? <laughs> that was scary. That was scary, but you know what's not scary? Filing a provisional patent application, or otherwise known as a PPA. That is not scary, and Damon's on here to talk about that, and he is a patent attorney. It is not Ooh. scary, and in fact, one of your InventRight students called me uh, a week ago and said, I don't know what to do, I gotta file this provisional patent application, I just don't know what to do, and I said, hey, listen, first thing, just take a deep breath. Go online, you can file it online, it's the simplest thing in the world. And after about five minutes, he was like, settled down and got it filed. It's really not scary. It's a very simple process. And it's the best, easiest way you can get your stake in the sand for your intellectual property. It's inexpensive well, and it's easy. And Damon does a great job. Damon, inside of our membership site for our students, he trains them in <laughs> excruciating detail, which doesn't need to be as detailed as you think, how to file a PPA. But today we're gonna to talk in PPAs more broadly. What are they? What are the benefits? What do they cost? David, what's the cost? What is it like? Is it like three or four grand? What is that? Yeah, at least twelve thousand made out to cash <laughs> to me personally. I uh, know it's like it's sixty-five bucks. So for sixty-five bucks as a micro Whoa. entity, you can file a provisional patent application. Wow! How awesome is that? Nice. Is it a patent? It's 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 a patent application, which means it will never turn into a full utility patent. To do that, you got to file a utility patent based on your provisional application. But it's an application. It gives you a year to decide to figure out whether or not you want to continue with your application. So it gives you a year to go pitch. It gives you a year to get out there and really sell this thing and make it happen. But, but Damon, can, can anybody do it anywhere in the world? How easy is it? Well, so there's easy parts and there's hard parts. The, the easy part is filing, and you can do that online. So you can do it anywhere in the world. I have Australian clients, I've got clients in Europe, clients in China, all of whom have filed their own provisional patent applications on their own, which makes it really accessible. The hard part for most people is just kind of getting over the hump and writing the thing down. That seems to be the hardest part, that anxiety. You know, when you were in English class in high school and they, they said, hey, we're gonna have a pop quiz and we're gonna write an essay today and everybody started sweating and everybody started crying and it just was horrible. Well, that's the way a lot of people feel with the provisional patent application. They just feel like it's just gonna be this horrible thing, but it's not, it's Damon, I got, I got a very important question for you. It, when you go on like Google Patents or the Patent Office site and you look at a patent, it's like, oh my God, what the heck is this? Does a PPA need to look like that? That's what so many people are scared of. They look at patents and they're like, I can't do that. Well, you gotta understand, we have to sort of justify why we charge so much money to people. So we write it in this sort of <laughs> language that nobody understands, and that keeps our jobs safe. But for a provisional patent application, you just tell your story. That's what I tell everybody. Just sit down and tell your story in your own words. And that's the best you can do. There's only two requirements for a provisional patent application. One is to send the USPTO their fee. And the second is that you have enablement. And that means that somebody can read your provisional application and no. know what it is you're doing. You can't hide anything. You gotta throw it all out okay, there and tell your story. Okay, now wait a minute here. Now wait a minute. That's the basics. But we do more than that at InventRight. We try to teach people to write these provisional patent applications so they truly have value. Now, James is going to put up a book that I wrote, how to license an idea with or without a patent, and really explains how to write a provisional patent application that has value, that actually has some workaround, uh, gives you the idea of, of, of thinking how someone might work around your idea so it does have value. And Damon, you're in the book, right? Am I in the book? Oh, I guess I am. <laughs> yeah, I you know, we had talked about this a lot, Stephen, and I agree with everything you just said. It's, I, I, I tell clients, and I really believe this, that the provisional patent application has a lot more use than just sort of securing your IP rights because it requires you to think about your product, to think about where it's gonna be. So oftentimes, inventors are so 
you know, blindside. They just put on the blinders and they go because they're solving a problem. But what you need to do when you go out and sell this thing and try to protect it is you need to think outside your little world and think about, hey, how am I going to add value? Where is this going to fall on a product line? Is it going to provide product differentiation down the line? How are we going to pitch this to a, a potential buyer who wants to go then pitch it to, to the public? So thinking about that is and, and considering that is really, I think, a critical part in the inventor's process. And that's what you guys do so well in helping the inventors do. Well, Damon, we do Thank it you so well because you're inside our membership site coaching and mentoring our students, you know, with your video trainings on how to file a provisional and do it right. You know, a couple well, one-hour videos in there, you do a great job. Of Thank it. you. No, I think, th I think there's a couple reasons why if you, if you write it correctly, it has more value. And you're really thinking out ahead because um, you can do it really simply. And Damon's right. You can do it so simple, but you need to think about it a little bit more. And, and, and so write that provisional patent application that shows your potential licensee that you've done your homework, that you've, you've, you've done a, uh, some prior patent searching, and you know where some of the pitfalls. So you have found your uniqueness, and you've kind of thought about it in such a way that if someone tries to do it a little bit differently, you've kind of mentioned it, so it gives you the opportunity later to kind of stop other people from finding a way to work around it. And that provisional patent application is such a great tool. It's extremely affordable. But Damon, I got a question. Does the USPTO ever open it up and look at it when you submit it? Not when you submit it. It goes completely unexamined. Where it will get looked at is down the line when you, it, when you file a utility patent based on your provisional and there's some question about whether you, or not you have support. That's the only time the PTO is going to look at that provisional mm -hmm. patent application. You know, oh, Stephen and Damon, you know what I'm almost telling people is 70% of writing a provisional is just thinking about all the workarounds, variations, improvements. The other 30% is the type of stuff that Damon teaches inside our site mm -hmm. on like what kind of wording to use, what not to use. But 70% of it is just being an inventor. Just Yeah, but I have a question, Damon. I, I like to add a lot of drawings because I was always told that a drawing is worth a thousand words. I might miss something. But if I have a drawing, and I and and I when I when I do these drawings for my provisional patent applications, it's almost like instructions. That's exactly right. How to build something? Is that right? That's or exactly wrong? right. And I, the more drawings, the better. And you know, you don't need to go into excessive detail for each drawing. But if you show you know different ways in which your product can be used in different circumstances, that can provide a lot of meat for the patent attorney later to say, hey, we had it in mind all these other variations that we wanted to do. So don't worry. If you have a picture or a, a sketch or whatever, get it down. And, and, and we'll worry about sorting it out all later. And you know, to what you said, Andrew, about the 70-30, you know, in, it's been my experience, that, that's exactly right. But also, the hardest part for people to do is just to start putting words on a paper. And if you can just get started, then it'll flow out of you because you know your invention better than anybody else. And you're gonna, you know, ask an inventor what he's doing and you're going to get stuck for an hour listening to everything they say about their invention but then when they go write it down they're just quiet as can be so just if they can just apply that 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 talent already to talk about their invention to their ppa they'll be in great shape just get started right it, it, I, I got one last question before okay. we last end. question Steve. let's then we say i end it file up. my ppa but i come up with some improvement what do i do then file another one take the one that you have so here's what i tell people you take the one you have add on a page of the new stuff, file it. So you, you'll have this sort of chain of PPAs down the line. And when the year comes up for the first one, then you can decide what you're gonna do and how you're gonna combine everything. But just keep filing them, file them away, file them as often as you want to. For 65 bucks, how can you afford not to? Excellent, thank you so much, David. True expert. Thank you, Stephen. I want to remind everybody to take care, keep inventing. Check out inventright.com, click on the coaching page, learn more about being coaching, mentoring inventors. For the last 16 years, and we'll catch you up again next time. See ya. Bye bye.